Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about variations in species. Okay, So within a species, there is usually a great deal of variation between the individuals. For instance, this is a cat species. Okay? And within this cat species, or this feline species, there's different variations between the different cats. Um, this cat is black and gray and orange and white, and this cat is just orange and white, and this cat is just black and orange. There's differences in their traits or in their characteristics. So we're going to do some talk about some definitions right now. You need to write these down. A species, guys, is a group of organisms that share the same features and that can breed together to produce fertile offspring. So if a group of organisms has the same types of features, basically, and they're able to breed or reproduce and create offspring that are fertile, we call them a species. Um, for instance, you've got the cat species, you've got the dog species. Now, guys, basically all the dogs that you know of are one species. They're the canine species. So it doesn't matter if it's a Chihuahua or if it's a German Shepherd. Okay. They are all the same species because basically you can interbreed the different types of dogs and they can still have offspring and those offspring are still fertile. So as long as you can actually breed the two different organisms and create fertile offspring, we call them a species. Now guys, this is also why those, those species that man has created, like ligers and all that, are not considered to be actual species because, for instance, if you breed a tiger and um, a lion, okay, in a, in a genetically in a lab, and you make a liger, um, those liger in general are not able to produce their own offspring. So if it's genetically messed with in some lab somewhere, we don't necessarily call it a species, but if in nature, in the wild, a group of organisms can actually reproduce and breed together to make fertile offspring, we call them a species. Now, every species has a set of traits. A trait is basically a characteristic of the species. So, for instance, dogs, um, they have height, how tall the dog is. They have length, how long the dog is. They have um, hair color is another trait of dogs. Eye color would be a trait of dogs. The length of their teeth or the types of teeth that they have would be another trait. Blood type would be a trait. The length of their tail would be a trait. So all of these characteristics of a species are called traits. In humans, we have traits as well. We have things like eye color, hair color, blood type, skin color, um, height, and, uh, gender. Okay, So all of those things are traits in human beings. So trait is basically a characteristic of a species. And finally, variation are the differences in a trait between different organisms within a species. So for instance, human beings have great variation in their hair color. The hair color is a trait of human beings, and the variations would be brown hair, blonde hair, red hair, white hair, gray hair, black hair, even no hair okay, would be a variation of that trait. Um, for instance, human beings have a trait known as blood type, and variations or differences in that trait between different human beings are some people have the A blood type, some people have B, some people have O, some people have AB. Um, so basically, that is a variation in that trait. So blood type would be the trait. Variation would be all the different types of blood types that the species can have. So here we got these snails. These snails are all of the same species, which means that they can breed and reproduce and create offspring that are fertile and can then reproduce themselves. So they're all part of the same species. Okay? And they have several different traits within their species. For instance, they have shell color. Um, they have shell size. They have the color of their slimy little bodies here. They have their shell shape. Okay. All of them, there are basically a whole bunch of different traits that these snails have in, within their species. The length of their little antenna thingies here, that is a trait. Okay. And then there are different variations or differences in each trait. Um, see what variations you can see in this picture. Okay, moving on. So the, sh the snail shells vary in their color. So sh 
shell color is a trait of the snails and the variation is that they have multiple different colors of, of basically shells. The presence or absence of bands of color is a trait and they are all different in that way. They have variation. The number of bands in their shells that you can count actually differs and that's a variation as well in that trait. So again, let me back up here. So the number of bands in the shells, that would be a trait. The presence or absence of bands, that would be a trait. The color of the shell, that would be a trait. The variation would be that some of them had orange shells and some of them had yellow shells and some of them had black and yellow shells. Um, a variation would be some of them had three or four bands in their shells and others had five or six bands in their shells. So those are the variations on these traits. These tiger moths are all in the same family. What variations can you see here? I'll give you a second. So the uppermost moth is larger than the other two. So the trait for those moths is size. And the variation is that some are bigger and some are smaller. Some have dark bands on their abdomen and they differ in number and thickness. So the trait is the fact that they have bands on their abdomen. Um, the variation is that some of the bands are thicker or thinner than others. Um, they have different patterns on their wings, and they're quite different from each other. So the trait would be that these butterflies have wing patterns, and the variation would be that they have different patterns for each butterfly. Um, the number, shape, and distribution of black spots on their hind wings differ. So for instance, the trait would be the fact that they have black spots. The variation would be that the number and the shape of them are different between one butterfly to the next. And finally, the amount of orange color on their hind wings varies as well. So you, you're already familiar with a whole bunch of different variations and traits among human beings. What variations can you see here among these kids? Go, I'll give you a second to think about it. Okay, well, these kids have, uh, our human being species has many, many, many traits. For instance, one trait we have is hair color. Another trait we have is skin color. Another trait that we have is height. Another trait that we have is blood type. Um, so among these kids, there are, there are variations in those traits. There's variations in the skin colors of the children. Trait, the trait is skin color. The variation is that they're all different. Um, there's variations in the hair color of the children. Again, the trait would be called hair color. The variation would be that you have blonde hair, brown hair, black hair. Um, curliness of hair is a trait, whether or not hair is curly or straight. And the variations would be here you have um, a couple of kids that, well, I don't see any kids actually that have curly hair, but a couple of kids might have curly hair and a couple of kids might have straight hair. Eye color is a trait. Okay. And the variations are you have some brown-eyed children, some blue-eyed children, some green-eyed children. Even the gender of the kids is a trait. Okay. And the variation here is that you have some that are boys, actually one that's a boy it looks like, and then some that are girls. Variations can be inherited or acquired. Inherited variations result from your genes, okay, from the DNA. And we talked about during meiosis how your cells basically um, go through a process where they create four individual sex cells or gametes, and each of those have half of the DNA that you need. You get one from your mom, you get one from your dad, and then you have a whole set of DNA again. That DNA contains something called genes, and those each trait eye color, hair color, height, blood type, each trait basically is controlled by one or more of those genes and the variations that you see in those traits are determined by which genes you have or which variations you have in your genes. So basically inherited variations result from activity of genes on DNA. We're going to talk more about DNA in our next video in a couple days. Um, genetically controlled variations cannot be changed. So for instance, things like blood type, you cannot change your blood type, it is genetic. Things like eye color, you can't change your eye color. Now guys, you can buy those contacts that have different colors and stick them in your eyes, but in general, you can't actually change your eye color, it's genetic. 
Um, things like hair color. You can dye your hair or color your hair, but overall you can't permanently change your hair color. It is genetic. Uh, so hair color, skin color, blood group, fingerprints are genetic. You can't change them, okay? Your gender, you can't change your gender. Well, you know, you can't really change your gender. Um, um, naturally speaking, there are different other options, but you cannot naturally change your gender. It is a genetic thing. Acquired characteristics are things that happen due to nutrition or your environment okay, during your lifetime. So examples of these, the language that you speak is not a trait. It's not a genetic trait. It is a characteristic that you learn by living in a particular culture while you're learning language. Um, athletic skills, to a certain extent, can be genetic. I mean, your muscle mass and that type of thing. But whether or not you actually can play soccer is not a genetic trait. It is actually an acquired trait. You learn how to play soccer. Um, obesity, again, is not generally a genetic trait. Um, you basically control that through diet and exercise. Um, your mental ability, mental skills are not a genetic trait. You acquire those through learning and paying attention in school. Um, and guys, changing your skin color through sun tanning would not be considered to be a genetic trait. That comes from the environment. So any characteristic you have that comes from the environment or nutrition is called an acquired characteristic. Acquired characteristics are not inherited. You change them through your environment. So these apples all came from the exact same tree. Therefore, they have the exact same genetics, this exact same DNA. So the differences in these apples were not genetic. They come from the growing season. The differences are not inherited. So you notice some of the apples are smaller and some are larger. They're slightly different colors. But all of these apples came from the exact same tree, guys. And so they are. their differences are not genetic. Their differences are based on the environment. The variation you see is due to the environment in that which they're at. For instance, these apples came from the upper branches. These apples came from the upper, the upper branches, while the smaller apples came from the lower branches. So what environmental conditions might have affected the tree? Well, the upper branches got more sunlight than the lower branches. Um, so they may have grown larger because they had more sunlight. The lower branches would have less sunlight, and so the shade of the upper branches probably made the apples actually smaller. So the differences in those apples were not genetic. They were not from due to genes or differences in genes. They were actually due to environmental conditions. Um, so many variations in a trait can be both genetic and environmental. It can be both. So, for instance, human beings have a trait known as height, how tall you become. Okay? Height is affected by both your genes that you inherit, and it's also affected by the amount of food you eat during the period when you're growing. Okay? So, uh, for instance, some of it is genetic. There are some people that it doesn't matter how much food they eat, they are not going to be six foot five when they're an adult. Okay? Genetically, it's not possible. They haven't inherited the genes that would make them that tall. There, but there are people actually who could be six foot five, but if they had poor nutrition when they were growing up, they might not actually reach that height because the environment that they grew up in didn't allow them to get enough food to reach their full height potential. Okay. Um, so height is one of those characteristics or traits in human beings that can be affected both through genes and through the environment. Um, your physique or how physically fit you are is another trait that's both inherited and environmental. Um, you may inherit just a, 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 a really great muscle mass, the ability to build lots of muscle. That could be inherited. It's a genetic trait. However, at the same time, if you don't work out, and you know do bodybuilding and lifting weights and things that muscle won't develop um, so a good physique or muscle mass is something that's a both genetic and it's also environmental and finally the pigment of your skin is both genetic 
and environmental. You inherit the pigment or the skin color of your skin, but at the same time, if you expose your skin to the sunlight, you can actually make your skin darker. Um, and if you don't go out in the sun as much, your skin will be lighter. Um, so basically, skin color is another trait that's both inherited and environmental.